Hey guys, this is an NHS DL6. Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Fire Emblem, Genealogy of the Holy War. This part, like the others in introducing a new chapter, has a lot of exposition, so I'm going to go ahead and be quiet while we seize this castle. Enjoy.
All right, now that it's our turn to take advantage of this castle, let's go ahead and do it. As you can see, our castle is actually starting to fill up quite nicely. I've got some things that I'd like to do, though. Some shuffling around that I think would be most beneficial that I'm going to show here. And then I have some off-screen business to take care of, but I'm going to show you the result of that. I'm not going to show any more of the arena, because that would just be annoying and... It takes forever, and it's going to take longer now that I have more people to deal with. So I won't show you that, but there is actually something special that can come of the arena for too long. So, um, first things first, I'm going to send Idina into town. She's actually going to go ahead and, um, she's going to sell that men's staff. And then Ethlyn is also going to go into town. And here... She's going to buy said men's staff for 7200 which is pretty expensive, but she's going to sell her uh, her heal staff, partially because Ideen has such high magic that she doesn't really need the extra boost from the men's staff. It's kind of overkill, so she's just going to buy the heal staff instead. Now, there are some pretty fun goodies here in the item shop that we're going to check out. If you go in here, you can see that there's quite a few things to buy, actually. There's that slim sword we, st we didn't buy and we never will. Um, I'm going to give Ira the steel blade. She can wield it, and she'll do a great job with it, so why not? Then I'm going to give Azel the Thunder Tome, which is... I mean, it's a pretty direct upgrade. As you can see, it's got it's stronger with 8 magic, or might instead of 6, I think, or 4. And uh, it's it weighs less, so he's going to go ahead and buy that. Now, I do have an explanation about what I'm going to do in the, um, with some of these things. Let's see, steel. What do I want to do here? I had, I had something that I was thinking about doing, but I forget what it is. Um, oh yeah, here we go. I'm going to give Yamka, um, he's going to sell off the killer bow, because instead what he'll have is I'm just going to give him the steel bow. He has a lot higher of attack, his skill is better, he doesn't really need the extra oomph that Medir needs. So instead... Oh, no, it's in the pawn shop. Or did I... There we go. Okay, good. So he's got the killer bow now. And I think... It would still be in my best interest to... I wasn't thinking about this at the moment. But... I don't think he's going to be able to buy the skill ring yet, unfortunately. I guess it's stuck on Ira for a little while. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and shuffle around a few more items, and then I'm going to do some arena grinding, and when I come back, there's a special thing that happens if you can make it all the way through the arena with at least one of your characters. So I'll show you that when I come back. Hey guys, I'm back, and now it's time for the more exciting part of this episode, if there is one. Uh, but anyway... So, I mentioned before that if you were able to make it through the entire arena, that you would have the opportunity to do something special, an event that is significant to this part in the game. So, what did I mean by that? I'm going to go ahead and show you how far I was able to get pretty much with everybody. I think that this is like the end of the road for most of the uh, characters that I have here. As you can see, nobody was able to make it through the arena yet, but I did that on purpose. All of these people got up to level 7, with that being the level they had yet to conquer, and the reason why I stopped there is because of the special thing that happens at level 7. Everybody else did okay. They got some 5s, 4s, uh, Arden, go figure, Ideen can't fight and do, is able to do the damage minimum of 1, but most of the enemies at this stage in the arena have somewhere between 40 and 50 HP. That would burn out his entire iron sword just from one battle, and he'd have to repair it, and his gold could be spent better elsewhere. So for the most part, do unfortunately is just going to have to be a bit of a straggler, and net kills when he can. So we're going to worry about that later on when we're actually in the middle of the chapter to get do a little bit more experience. However, everybody else is coming along quite nicely, and I'll explain a little bit more once I finish. So... First things first, a few of the people, like I showed, were able to get to level 7. A couple examples are Madir, Finn, Yamka, right? So, 
This is something that is special that can only happen with a melee unit. If you go into the arena with someone like Medir, and you go to fight, you pick your weapon, it says the opponent is level 7. This is not significant, okay? Ranged fighters will always fight just a standard person. It's not important or unique, right? It's not a recruitable person. However, if a melee fighter goes in and fights, let's use Sigurd for example, he's the best person to do it. Let's just go ahead and pick the... Actually, let's go ahead, let's pick the Lance. I'll, uh, I'll switch to the Lance, I feel like that would be a better weapon to use. You already saw a little bit about what I'm saying. This person that you're going to be fight is Holin. He is a level 12 Myrmidon with an iron sword. Now, what makes Holin significant is that he is a recruitable character, and he is the person that will have a very effective lover pair in the near future. So, the reason why I'm picking Sigurd to do this is because fighting Holin is a bit tricky. You have to beat Holin, you have to knock out away all of his HP, and then afterwards, he'll join you. However, Holin has a very significant skill called Lunar Sword, and Lunar Sword negates an, en an enemy, I guess technically it would be your character, would be an enemy to him. It negates someone's defense for one turn. So, It'll be as if you had zero defense going up against his full powered attack. That's scary. So, you better pick a character that can hopefully have enough HP to withstand it. You probably are going to see it in this fight. And there it is. Yeah. That did a ton of damage, but we took him down. So we get the gold. And then... And there we go. We got ourselves... Holen. And I'm gonna give his uh, player card in this episode, because why not. So, um, let's go ahead and check out Holen. He's a level 12 Mermidon, like I said, or Sword Fighter. No, he's an Iron Blade, sorry, that's an Iron Blade and an Iron Sword. Crazy good stats. He and Ira are both fantastic units. He's a little bit hardier than Ira, which will make him easier to use, but he's a little slower, and he's not quite as skillful, so it'll be a little bit harder for him to trigger his skills. He's got a crap load of gold, 10,000, A and Swords, and his two skills, oops, sorry, let's go back to this. His two skills are Pursuit, like he needs it, and Luna. So, Luna, Lunar Sword, it negates defense for a turn, and for one round of attacking from your character to the opponent, and it lets you do a full powered attack with zero defense calculated. He has got minor Odo Blood, so he's got a pretty high skill growth, which is really, really nice. So, that's the only character that I know of that you can get this way, but it's pretty unique, and I think it's pretty cool. So, um, yeah. You know, you should use them, obviously. But, unfortunately, the upcoming chapters are really going to reinforce what I said about the fact that non-mounted units are going to struggle. And it's in your best interest to utilize the arena to get them to maybe three levels if you can. Because the experience you get from the arena is generally greater than the experience you get on the field. And that way they won't fall too far behind. Now, I did do a little bit of rearranging. I got some people some new items and whatnot. Um, and just to, just to recap, I gave Yamka the steel bow, and I gave his killer bow to Madir, because I figured that would probably be better. I sold Finn's iron lance and gave him the, the steel lance, and I'm going to repair all the items that are currently needing repair. <laughs> um, I gave the Iron Lance to Noish because he didn't really have a lance to use in case he was being attacked by sword fighters. Azel has now got the Thunder and the Magic Ring from Deidre. And you might be saying, why would you do that? Looking at Azel's magic, he now has 17 with the Magic Ring, which is nice. Deidre still has higher magic without it. So, that's okay. She wasn't actually going to be getting too far in the arena. There is a Myrmidon, and without the ability to attack twice in one turn, Deidre's kind of... A duck. Lame duck. So, <laughs> a duck. That was... A, <laughs> she's a duck. Quack, quack. Um, anyway, 
So, let's just take a look really quick at what the arena would look like. I'm not going to run through it, but let's see what it would look like now that level 7 is different. You can fight Holen with any of your characters, it doesn't matter, minus uh, archers. So, you'll have the chance to fight him, and if you beat him, you get him, obviously. But now, we're fighting a hero with a steel blade. He is 11 levels higher than Holen, and he is much stronger. So, you got to pick your battles. But anyway, uh, that's how the arena is looking so far. And I think that maybe I'll do a little bit of grinding with Holen and then wrap things up. And then next chapter, or next chapter, sorry, next episode, we're going to get going with a high octane chapter that is definitely going to require some fast paced choices. Alright, guys, I've been NHSDL6. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.